here's a review of the shows I went to this year. All right, it's that time of year again. It's a time where I come back and report back to home base to discuss all of the shows I went to. Honestly, uh, yeah, this year was a lot calmer than last year. I actually came back in one piece. It was not as riotous as November last year. I'll be so honest with you. Last year, I was truly fighting for my life. This year, I was only fighting for my life on maybe like two or three occasions. It wasn't that bad. Like, I'd be seeing people on Twitter talking about, yeah, I'm getting to the age where I need to start like listening to, to smooth jazz. And it's like, yeah, honestly, I'm getting old. I'd be leaving these, con these concerts just sitting on the, the Jubilee line with a bad back sometimes. I'm getting old, fam. And, and to be honest with you, we'll get into this, but yeah, this whole November thing, these guys need to start spreading out their concerts because it's just coming in the winter. I'd be cold, fam. I'd be going to these concerts cold. Do your concerts in the summer, guys, please. Or the autumn or the spring. But yeah, in this video, I'll just be going over some of my favorite concerts I went to this year, basically all of them. But yeah, without further ado, I go by Ish. Let's get weird. Okay, so the first concert I attended this year was Mr. Rage. It was more of like a mini festival kind of thing. It was at XOYO and yeah, DJ setlist was good. It was DJ EJ. She's really talented. I really mess with her. I'll be real. I was just chilling at the back this time around. I was kind of still recovering from November if I'm being real, even though it was in March. I did miss Quaid's set. But I got in just in time for OG Kemi. OG Kemi's set was good. He did an interesting set list. Some of the tracks weren't really for me considering the context, but I still messed with it though. He delivered really well. And yeah, you can see literally all of the videos for these concerts on my second channel, Ish Plus Six. It'll be floating around over there somewhere, I don't know. But yeah, yeah, we were just there to rage. I wasn't like, tracks like Amazing, they're not really moshing songs. They're more for the baddies, you know? But hey, if that's the vibe that he was on, then I, I I have to respect it. I will say I was seeing people bouncing from beginning to end, so you know it's it's all of these it's it's the same demographic. It's the same demographic. You know what demographic I'm talking about. It's the same demographic each time. I don't like them. Had them go. Had them all going crazy though. That track is definitely for moshing. Man said, menace to these crackers, I was never showing love. Come on, fam, like, that's that's smoke. Smoke, if if you've ever heard it before. CL set was good as well. That guy had an album this year, by the way. CL Miviad, I think that's what it was called. Yeah, he had an album this year. He brought everyone up on stage as well. Usually I don't really like when people have an entire gang of people up on stage just because I'd be getting scared. I'm joking, but no, just because um, I just don't really like it. Like, why do these people, why do you need to bring the entirety of North London up on stage with you? But this time I messed with it. I liked it. Kanashi had energy as well. I didn't know him beforehand, but when he came up, the energy was brazy. His bass was shaking the room. <laughs> And that's not even the bass from the track, the bass in his voice, this guy's deep ass voice. I was like, oh damn, yeah, I need to record this. <laughs> oh, I thought it was an earthquake going on or something. I don't know too much about what's going on behind the scenes, but this guy's got to put his stuff back on streaming. Because honestly, yeah, the stuff that I did here was absolutely insane. Black Air Force activity to a T. Nine Nova was good. Yeah, this guy's stage dive, this thing that he does with the stage dives. was sick. You can go watch our interview that we did this year. Yeah, Nine Nova's talented for real. His energy and crowd control was on 10 throughout the entire thing. I love the way he interacts with the crowds. You could tell that he'd been there before and he'd been in this situation, in this scene. He's just, yeah, he's, he's definitely going to be something serious one day. Again, I just would have liked to see less henchmen and henchwomen on stage. Like, man weren't even invited apparently, so I don't know who these people even were. Like, what is it? By being behind the DJ booth, being on the stage, like, what is it, guys? Like, what, does it make you feel like a baddie? Does it make you feel like a main character? What is it? And one final thing I will say about these underground rappers is they've got to stop palming the mic with their hand. Guys, just hold the mic 
properly please we can't hear you you guys sound like you're trying to rap with a blanket tied to your head or something overall though the energy the people were bringing was good i enjoyed the evening Next up, we've got Big Baby Gucci at Peckham Audio. You know what? This was a good show. I actually met Big Baby Gucci outside of the venue. He was just standing out there, just chilling, fam, and bare people walked past him and just straight into the venue without noticing. I was like, oh, damn, like, he does not look like he's from around here. Oh, oh damn, is this Big Baby Gucci? His energy was cool. He was doing up UK accents and all of that. I'll put the video here. A picture, yo. Gucci in <laughs> We got Gucci for real, man. He had White Rose Moxie as the opener. White Rose Moxie was okay. People didn't really know him too well. I only know him off of the one song called Tricks. I was playing that back in like 2020 and I haven't really played him since. Crowd interaction was all right. Stage presence wasn't really there, but I guess that's just because of the energy of the crowd. There wasn't, there weren't too many people there. It was not sold out in the slightest. Nine Nova was the second opener. It was good to see him again. Yeah, of course he brought the energy as usual. Didn't stage dive this time for good reason, because it was <laughs> it was not packed in there. This guy would have been dropped on the floor. He knows how to get these people hyped. I was in a pit with like 10 other people and we were all gassed. Ray Maddox was the next opener. He probably had the best energy out of all of the openers this time around. Energy was on 10 from the jump. The song choices were good considering the time he had. He basically took this as his opportunity to market himself. Then Big Baby Gucci came out. This guy Big Baby Gucci's energy was on 10 right from the beginning, right until the end. And especially considering it's a very small venue, honestly, I have to rate it, I have to respect Big Baby Gucci. Bro has over 300k on Spotify and Peckham Audio is max like 250 people. It's not a big spot. The set list though was sick. He essentially took all the hits from all of his albums. He's got bare projects, man. Again, the random sidemen on stage, I don't really know how I feel about that. Like, who are these people? Granted, a couple of them were cameramen, but still, fam, like, who are these randomers? Last song, a guy did a flip in the middle of the pit. It was... <laughs> That didn't happen across the any of the other gigs I went to this year, by the way, so I was shook seeing that. Didn't see any merch there. Personally, I would have liked to see some merch. I probably wouldn't have bought it, I don't think, but, it, you know, still, it would have been good to see some. Next up, we've got Ecstasy at Amazing Grace in London. It was pretty good. There was no opener though, but the set list, like the DJ set list was okay. It was more like a playlist that was playing. There wasn't really a set list. The venue was absolutely beautiful. It was like this old church kind of thing turned into like a pub slash club venue kind of, I don't know. Um, It might have been my favorite venue of the year, if I'm being real with you. This guy came out on slightly weird energy. He came out, was taking swigs of vodka the entire time. I don't know why this is a trend among some artists where they'll just come out just swigging alcohol the entire time clearly intoxicated but hey whatever makes you make our experience better the live band was cool the girl drummer was cool freaking scott pilgrim vibes i messed with it and yeah the general crowd energy was good as well they were sensible with their moshing which i liked i wasn't like getting thrown across the room <laughs> like a rag doll like last year literally at like five different shows last year so yeah it was good to see and he low-key had jokes as well if i'm being real <laughs> I like when artists don't take themselves too seriously to the point where it's kind of cringe. The merch was cool, it was priced really sensibly as well. There were some shows that I went to last year where I was honestly appalled at the prices of the merch, but yeah, £25 for a t-shirt wasn't that bad. Also had the option to get it in black, pretty even mix of guys and girls. I was one of like four black people in the entire room though. I did chat with another black person there and we were like, yo, we're the only black people in this room. Hey man, that's, that's life I guess. Okay, let's get into the wireless, the wireless debacle. Let's talk about that. Okay, so wireless was definitely, was actually my first festival. I stepped out of the underground train station at Finsbury Park. It was bare people fitting one of two demographics. It was either bare people dressed in PLT and Fashion Nova or bare people 
dressed in all black. Personally, of course, I was in the first demographic. You can never go wrong with a good PLT bodysuit. And yeah, it was just, it was, I mean, you know, I'm a fashionista, what can I say? Anyways, we got to we got to Finsbury Park and I swear to you, I have never seen that many people in my entire life in one place. The average person is not supposed to know that that many people exist. I stand by that. And literally, I was just there, just scared of getting mobbed by all of my subscribers, for real, for real. Like, I was just a little bit shook, but hey. First act we saw was Destroy Lonely and from the jump, it was absolutely riotous. One thing I love about these American artists is how they treat the UK like it's some kind of novelty. It's the funniest thing. This guy Lone came out in like Union Jack beanie. It was the funniest thing. It's like, what is this guy wearing, fam? Ken came out with a shirt that had the Queen's face on it. I don't even know it. It was probably Balenciaga or something. I was looking at that. I was like, yo, is that the Queen? Everyone in the crowd was looking at me like I was some kind of Dumbo, fam. I was like, no, look at his shirt. Is that the Queen on his shirt? These men were like, no, yeah, that's the Queen on the stage, bro. <laughs> this guy Lone looked like a top charmer, though, for real, fam. You look like, you know, yeah. Okay, guys, same problem as last year. The moshing has got to stop. These men were moshing to nonsense. And I'll talk about it a little more when I get to Lancy later on. But I'm not happy. These men were out here moshing to If Looks Could Kill. And I was seeing people on Twitter like, oh, If Looks Could Kill was not a rage song. Da, 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 da. Apparently it is to these wireless people. These men were moshing to it. They were like, open it up, open it up. If Looks Could Kill. Maybe I'm the fashion team. What's your problem? I don't know, maybe that's something that Lone needs to consider for future performances. Like, he needs to decide whether he's going to have strictly mosh and rage songs or strictly ambient kind of like chill songs. He needs to decide. Lone's energy was all right. I would have liked to have seen him come out a little bit further on the little finger thing that sticks out. Ken came out and he was on that, that finger thing the entire time, basically. I will say though, the scream during fake niggas was absolutely insane. That scream could probably be heard all the way in Reading or something, fam. Like it was insane. It sounded like a like an eagle or something. Ken Carson was next, and that guy definitely knows how to control the crowd. That is something I will say for facts. He came out, bro. He was just on smoke the entire time. It was absolutely insane. And with his catalog, I will say it's not exactly hard, but yeah, nah, he he did his thing. I Spice was next, if I'm not mistaken. It was at this point where I was like, yeah, nah, I need to go and rehydrate. She brought out Pink Panther S. And yeah, I was busy rehydrating. I could kind of see them through the trees and it was cool, it was cool. I heard that there was some nonsense with their mics going on and Ice Spice was bare late as well. I don't know what was going on. Everyone was just late. Lancy came out though and it was disappointing, the crowd response for Lancy. This guy really did put his all into that performance. I was the littest person in the entire area. I was, uh, I think there was like one other guy near to me who was kind of lit, but yeah, that was it. He brought out Sexy Red fam. Do you know how gassed that is? I was so, the way I screamed, I give myself the biggest ick every single time I listen to that video. One thing I will say about this whole time at Wireless is I have never felt dehydration like I felt that truly insane. I forgot to say, yeah, of course, Ken, Ken Carson came back out for Money and Sex with um, Destroy Lonely. That was really cool seeing them both on the stage at the same time. You can see the video on the Ish Plus Six account. You can see all of the videos from Wireless at the Ish Plus Six account as well. Yeet came out. I did not know that the UK road for Yeet the way that they do. I know I say this a lot, but I've really never been so disrespectfully tossed about. The crowd would do these weird crowd surge things where an entire wave of people would come from nowhere. It was this one guy near me, he was like, who's doing that? Who keeps doing that? And there's like 50k people here and like 10k people in this one quadrant alone. Your guess is literally as good as anyone else's here. Yeet was absolutely insane. These people were rapping his lyrics bar for bar, word for word. That guy speaks gibberish fam. He speaks Yeetanese in his music and these people were rapping it bar for bar. His energy was all right. He came out wearing the mask the entire time. Next up was Playboy Carti and yeah. That is when things got dangerous. I could barely see a damn thing. And I've told this story a bunch of times. I looked to my left, I looked down, it's just some guy, probably around my age, but he was short, like five foot nothing, fam. He looks up at me with puppy dog eyes. I'm like, bro, can you even see a damn thing? This guy Carty was on stage right in front of us. He couldn't see a thing, fam. Just bare off his goons with him. That bold guy, I can't remember his name. Carty's set was pretty good me and our left basically kind of before it finished just because of them trains yeah nah that mass migration of people after wireless was absolutely insane as well Carti's set was probably the best one of the entire day though i will say that the way he came out literally popped out yeah he just showed up out of nowhere fam and just was on the stage it was absolutely insane his entrance it was cool though it was definitely a good set 
Next up, we've got Don Tolliver at the OVO Arena Wembley. I didn't see the opener at Don Tolliver. It was a little bit disappointing, but my trains were late as hell, though. I, I, I'm sick and tired of the London Underground at this point. No merch either, actually. I don't know what bro was playing at. Alright, so this is a bit embarrassing because, um, and a bit awkward because, yeah, there was actually merch there and I just, yeah, yeah, I just forgot that it was there. Um, here's the merch, guys. <laughs> the guy's stage design, though, 10, 10. Bro had like a heart thing on the stage. It was sick. The DJ was good as well. He wasn't too intrusive, but he definitely got us all hyped. He gave us the energy we all needed. Midway through, Don came up through the ground and played this like unreleased song and like came up on this platform. Was it that good? I don't even think so. The song he chose was a little bit odd. It was like some unreleased track called Did It For Love or something like that. He could have chosen something better. And then midway through he started getting lit, or midway through his set list that is. And it was at this point where I was like, right, let me move from where I am because the people I was around, they were not lit in the slightest. I was like, Bro, why would you come here and not get lit fam? You're in the standing area. And yeah, I stepped into those pits and it was good. I like pits where people are gas, but not too gas where I'm risking my life. It wasn't too dead that I was the littest one there. It was a nice balance where we were all just gassed and hyped for Don. One thing I've learned as of recent, especially this year, is that you do not want to be the littest person in the middle of the pit. And yeah, being the least lit, because being the least lit, you can just fight your way out of there if you're like strong enough. But yeah, being the most lit is just kind of embarrassing. It was a good set. I did lose my headphones though, which was a little bit annoying. I'm pretty sure there were bare pickpockets there. Something needs to be done about those guys. But yeah, Don definitely put on a show. Good moves, good all of this, good all of that. He played all of the bangers as well. He didn't really leave anything out, which I liked. So yeah, it was overall a good show. Next up we've got Lancy Foe at the Roundhouse. I saw Lancy last year as well, in case you didn't know you can see my review. It will be floating over here, you know. I think I preferred here at Outernet. It was a bit more intimate. Roundhouse was cool though, I will say. I was late as per usual and I stepped in like in the middle of Fimi Guerrero's opener set. Yeah, these guys were on smoke from the beginning, these guys in the pits. It was, I was expecting something crazy, but yeah, Fimi Guerrero was, yeah. No merch, unfortunately, and I would have actually considered buying merch this year. It was honestly probably one of my favorite shows of this year. Truly a violent crowd, I was fighting for my life during that show. And if there was ever a show to come to on Smoke Out for all of them, definitely this one. And I'll be real, I was late, but I was thinking to myself, yo, I'll get there at like 7, maybe 8, doors will be open, it will be fine, I'll just step right in. <laughs> the streets of London had a different story. The streets of London were like, HA! Say less! Here's the entire population of London in the queue for this Lancy Foe show. And there were baddies in that show, in, in that queue as well, fam. I was walking just like, making sure that I didn't trip over anything, because I promise you if I'd have tripped over something, I'd have had to you guys aren't gonna put me in your group chat tomorrow morning, that's for sure. I was literally walking, and I'm not exaggerating, for five minutes, five in time, maybe even ten minutes, I don't even know. I was walking, the queue just kept going. I walked to the end of a road, looked around the corner, it just kept going, just bare eyes on, on me. I'm so glad I was wearing my sunglasses, fam. I had my headphones on, I had my shades, I was masking a panic attack, it was just, yeah. It wasn't a pleasant feeling. <laughs> but yeah, there's this weird trend that I've noticed with artists, and it's worse than the moshing thing. You can't even see them partway through. The smoke machines, I'm sick and tired of these smoke machines, fam. It happened at like four different shows this year. I don't know if it's the artist's choice or if it's the venue's decision or what, but these smoke machines, they're doing too much. I was looking at one side of the stage thinking, oh yeah, Lancey's over there. Whole time, he's literally standing right in front of me, fam. And that was only a quarter of the way through as well. Smoke machines were doing too much, fam. It felt like there were just bare ghosts in the room just getting lit. Like, But yeah, let's get into it. The show we got from Lancey, <laughs> yeah, different. It was different. Started off with, I think it was Yes You Are or something like that. It was beautiful. No, it started off with Spirit of Ecstasy and then it got into the Back to the Trap stuff. And yeah, my ears were absolutely blown out by the end of it. Pause. Let me just read off the list of artists that this guy Lancey brought out. I can't imagine what the green room must have looked like at this show. Fimi Guerrero, Len, Unknown T, Bacar, Strand, it kept, it keeps going. Strands, Rema, you guys. I don't think you understand the scenes that took place when Rema came out. I 
I've never heard a place go so insane for someone. I turned to the guy next to me, just a stranger. I was like, yo, who did this guy just bring up? This guy was like, Rema. I was like, oh, Rema! I don't even check for Afrobeats like that, but even I was like, oh, swear. Setlist was cool. I would have liked to see, to have seen India on the setlist though. But again, I saw it last year, so I'm not really complaining that much. He ended off with Mob Boss. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this track, as you guys will come to find out, had one of my favorite bars of the entire year. I just turned to Jack Harlow, because suspect black. I turned to Harry Styles, they wouldn't stop me for the shank. We were all so gassed. Same happened with Don't Talk, every every single bar, bar for bar, and also Lancey or Lancey as well. That's the one that had everyone going lit, because obviously it went viral on TikTok and stuff. Len's set was good. He's definitely good live. The visuals on the screen as well, you guys? Bro, these visuals were insane. But anyways, let's move on. Next up we've got Earth Eater at the Village Underground. This was probably the weirdest one of the entire year if I'm being real with you. I stepped into that room and they had that blue lighting flooding the entire room. You could barely see a thing. The vibes were kind of cool. Well, they had like ambient music playing and stuff like that. I really didn't think they were going to have any opener because I hadn't seen anything mentioned online or anywhere. Then the lights went down. Everyone starts cheering and all of that thinking, yeah, Earth Eater's gonna come on. I was like, yeah, Earth Eater's coming on. This guy steps onto stage and I'm thinking, okay, um, Earth Eater's on, I'm assuming this guy's just gonna like play the flute and then it will go into one of Earth Eater's songs. This guy was playing the flute for half an hour. Half an hour of this guy playing the flute, you guys. I always put my phone up to record. I think I switched hand that I was recording with about four times. Didn't introduce himself, nothing. We were all stood around confused as hell. And normally this wouldn't have been that weird to me because I was just like, I just tend to accept anything that happens. But I, I was so confused. But two minutes pass, I'm thinking, okay, this is pretty cool. Guy's got talent. Five minutes pass, another five minutes. Once it hit 20 minutes, I was like, all right, man. Wagwan, where's Miss Eater, fam? Wagwan for her. This intro has been a bit of a stretch. My arms are pretty tired. 30 minutes of my life spent watching a guy blow into a stick with some holes on it. Pause. Don't get me wrong, I see beauty in every single genre, but I was not expecting him to be playing for that long. There were some parts I enjoyed though, sometimes the beat would come in real nice and everyone would be vibing and you'd see that on everyone's face and people bobbing their heads and stuff. Anyways, Earth Eater came on set a little bit later on and she put on a show, if I'm being honest with you. I would have liked to have heard some more stuff from her album Trinity, that's what really got me into her this year, but we only got like three tracks I think. We didn't get to hear Super Soaker live, which was a bit of a disappointment because honestly I was ready to start floating in that space. She played a lot of bangers from her recent album Powders though, and yeah, it's just nice seeing live bands. The thing is though, if you're an artist and you're going to be doing a Powders, <laughs> I get that the album was called Powders, but if you're an artist and you're gonna be doing up Powders behind the scenes, don't make it bait, I Don't come out slurring your words, talking about some, oh, oh, yeah, but, but, bro, she put on a show though, I'll be honest with you, and she sounded heavenly, like, she literally sounded just like the record, so, I, I, but yeah, don't make it so bait though, you, you, you ain't slick, you ain't slick, Alexandra. The merch was definitely interesting. I didn't buy any this time around. I wasn't really feeling it that much. It looked a little bit difficult to style. I just wasn't really feeling it. Um, yeah. All right, so next up was Cigarettes After Sex at the Eventum Apollo. I did not, okay, I did kind of know Cigarettes After Sex was popping like that, but I was literally walking for basically the same amount of time that I was walking to get to the end of the queue at Lancy. They had these zigzag kind of queue things. I was shook, I was like, whoa. Am I even gonna get in before they start? I did. I got in like half an hour before they started, which was a bit annoying, but hey. This venue, honestly, low-key goated out of all of them. The layout is beautiful. It's this kind of like amphitheater kind of vibe. The floor is sloped. Bro, someone seven feet tall could have been stood in front of me and my view wouldn't have been obscured in the slightest. They didn't have an opener. For the price I paid, I would have liked to, see an, to have seen an opener. I paid like 40 pounds for this um, event. It was a pretty minimalist experience, so I don't know why the price needed to be that high. Again, they did the thing with the smoke machines. They need to stop doing that. Granted, I could see them for pretty much the entire thing, but still, they need to chill with the smoke machines. They had some cool visuals though on like the projection screen. That was cool. They had like these vintage kind of black and white White movies because of course everything's in black and white in the cigarettes after sex universe apparently guys right at the end they did this thing where they were playing apocalypse the drop this disco ball was shining bro i that is probably the first time i've ever felt my spirit leave my body at one of these events it felt like an out-of-body experience I'll, I'll play it right here so you guys get what i'm saying <laughs> Thank you. 
setlist was a little bit dead they did waste a bit of time on mid tracks like neon moon and affection like okay we know these tracks exist but we didn't get to hear tracks like touch tracks like hentai all of them types of things i would have liked to have seen that i don't know what they were playing at he did this really cool guitar solo though um where it really did sound like he was shredding it i think i recorded it if i did i'll put it here if not then sorry you know <laughs> way too many couples in the crowd for a shoegaze slash indie slash sad type band why are you man happy i'm here to watch people cry you man are out here cuddling go home this isn't for you but yeah anyways we move um merch quality was not the best t-shirts tote bags i probably would have gone back and gotten a tote bag or something like that maybe i don't know because 30 pounds for a t-shirt of that quality a little bit questionable. It feels a little bit cheap. Design was a little bit mid. I would have liked them to not be so on the nose with the branding. I got the You're All I Want tee, but I'd have liked to see that detailed on the front instead of the band's name, because where am I going to go with the name Cigarettes After Sex on the t-shirt? You know what I'm saying? I probably should have thought a bit deeply about that before I put £30 on the t-shirt, but it's whatever. No design on the back, no nothing. It's just basically a simple t-shirt. Next up we've got Eve's Tumor at the O2 Forum Kentish Town. This was my second event at the Kentish Town after JPEG Mafia last year and yeah, this was different. Honestly I had low expectations just simply based on the reddit threads that I'd been seeing over the past couple of days before the show. They were talking the most about Eve's barely singing their songs, violating their bandmates and all of that. Yeah and I was just being a menace fam, not in the Rema way either but in a Dennis way and I was like okay well whatever I've already paid I'm not gonna sell the tickets it's gonna be an experience no matter what and honestly I was pleasantly surprised he came out on vibes but let me start from the beginning I stepped into the venue during nations set I didn't know who it was but he was good good to the point where I literally put him on Shazam I was like who is this guy because I just thought he was just some guy doing karaoke at the beginning just filling up time or something I missed Moa Lola but to be honest I wasn't really fussed I saw her last year anyways and I mean yeah Echo 2K was cool though, he came on, I didn't really know the music, but yeah, it was very clear that these people came to see Echo. These men were so incredibly gassed, yeah, I was shook, because I did not know these men rode for Echo like that. I guess it makes sense to be honest. The fanbase Venn diagram of Eve's Tumor and Echo probably looks like a circle. I will say, the demographics that attended this concert, there were two main demographics if I'm being real, it was either earth tone black girls or a certain demographic of people that just look like they don't shower I'll, I'll leave it at that yeah no nah, the way echo 2k carries himself as well the moves um yeah they're just definitely up there but i will say echo 2k was on there for what felt like ages i only knew like two songs definitely good as an opener if he was maining though i probably would have wanted a bit more energy aside from like crawling around like uh literally like a spider it was I mean, it's artistry, I guess. Eves came out a little bit later on, dressed in more clothes than I expected considering previous performances. You really do never know what to expect with Eves' tumor. The vibes were good, though, I will say that throughout the entire show. But yeah, the, they were good until I literally couldn't see them. And that's not to say because I was at the back of the venue, but literally because these smoke machines were once again doing the most. These ghosts of the Kentish town were apparently getting lit. But yeah, one of my flexes at going to these concerts is being able to say, yo, I saw this person so-and-so with my own two eyes. Fam, I barely even saw Eve's the entire concert. Yeah, no, it was just uh, the smoke machines make things a little bit disappointing. And I don't know why you'd want the lights to be behind you while you're performing as well. PSA, if you're a short person that wants to get on your man's shoulders at these concerts, I'm tired of it. I will make you, I will turn you guys into a Jenga tower, fam. Eve's had a bunch of merch, the t-shirt was pretty good, I liked it, it was a bit expensive though, I think it was like £30 or something like that, but yeah, the quality is pretty good for what I got. Next up was Chase Shakur at Colors Hoxton. I stepped into the venue, it was pretty cool, pretty, pretty chill, pretty nice. Merch was the first thing I saw when I stepped in. I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't really feeling it, just simply because this man's face was like right like at the bottom of the shirt. I was like, how on earth am I gonna style this? I liked the design on the back though, the, 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 the wow. The design on the back was pretty cool and I probably would have bought, would have bought the merch if it wasn't so bait because the pricing was pretty decent as well. But yeah, when I was in the line to get in, I was just chilling. This guy Chase literally just walked past me. Taller in person, I will say that. He looks kind of short on socials and on my phone screen, but nah, he's, yeah. He's taller in person. I guessed him up. I was like, hey, what's up, it's Chase. Oh my gosh. He was a cool guy. He had good energy. And yeah, when I got into the main room, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I was wall hugging that entire time. I was not in that main area, in the main 
pit area. Not that people were mossing at Chase, but they were bouncing a little bit. I will say that. And I like energy like that. The vibes in this venue were so good throughout the entire thing. I loved it, man. Yeah, they have this fixture lighting on the ceiling at Colors Hoxton. I have to say, I was entranced the entire time. It looked like a bunch of ladybugs on the ceiling or like, looked like a bunch of fireflies, like red fireflies just tweeting on the ceiling. It was beautiful. The people there were just such good vibes. I'd say they were probably the best vibes out of all of the gigs this year. The opener was Nate Taylor. The bass in those songs was absolutely insane. Kind of like hip hop slash R&B vibes. He brought out a guest artist as well. Never heard of her, but she was a vibe and you could just tell that she was kind of new to the scene. She still exuded confidence to everyone. DJ set was cool. The first DJ was good. He was on a cool vibe, but the second DJ did one of the craziest things I've ever seen a DJ do in my life. Let me tell you, this guy mixed Sade with Afro beats or something similar like that. I was in, I was shook in the in the venue. I was looking around like, is anyone else hearing this? Everyone else was shook as well. All right, so it turns out I don't have the video of the Sade moment, but this other moment was brazy. <laughs> Creativity was insane. Honestly, I felt like going up there, handing him the SMG CEO's number or something like that. I don't have connections like that, but one day, Chase came out and did his thing as well, and it was a really good performance. But I will say one thing about these performances is after you spend enough time like listening to some of these artists, you do realize that a lot of their songs do sound the same. This was the case for Chase, no rhyme intended. Um, I was up there thinking, yo, I love this song. Like I'd hear the first three seconds, yo, I love this song fam. And it would just be a completely different song. And like, oh wow, these songs really do sound the same. Chase had good energy. He pretended to do that thing where he went out at the end of the show and then everyone was like, one more song, one more song, one more song. Um, he came back out. And he was like, what song should I sing, kind of. I was like, yo, I don't want to fall in love. Because he didn't do that song for some reason. And that's one of my favorite songs by him. And it's one of his biggest as well. And he was like, do you guys want to hear I Don't Want to Fall in Love? Everyone was like, yeah. And then he sang it. And it was a really wholesome experience. I was glad that he sang that song. But he didn't sing it, though. Everyone else sang it for him. He sang a couple of words here and there. But yeah, it was good. Anyways, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. These videos take me like 5 million hours to edit and make and all of that. Make sure you guys like the video. Make sure you guys like the video. Make sure you guys like the video. Make sure you guys like the video, pretty please. And also subscribe and comment on any shows that you guys went to. If you agree or disagree, if you saw me in the crowds fighting for my life, crying my eyes out, having a panic attack, getting non-verbal, if you saw any of that, talk to me check out my other videos as well if you messed with this one but yeah talk to me about which shows you want to see next year as well if you're going to any and yeah I'm, I'm just gassed man i like seeing people comment on the videos it's cool interacting anyways keep it real and i will see you later alligators